Greetings and salutations. This is the voice of Loquacious of Heard, bringing you his afterthoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 7, Episode 22, titled Once Upon a Zeppelin. I heartily suggest you find and watch the episode itself, Sans Commentary, before proceeding with either this afterthoughts review or viewing my full reaction, which is hosted at the link in the description. Please support the official release. Be warned, this afterthoughts review will contain spoilers for the episode itself. With that out of the way, on to the review. We begin with Twilight being invited to embark upon a Zeppelin cruise with her family, and, after Spike steps in to insist that Twilight take a break from her duties to go have fun, that's exactly what Twilight sets off to do. The whole family is along. Twilight Velvet and Nightlight, who I may occasionally be referring to as Mom and Dad respectively to avoid confusion, Shining Armor, Princess Cadence, and Princess Flurryheart all join Twilight Sparkle for a trip on the very fanciful looking airship. I approve! I trust the royal family here will be welcomed aboard the cruise? I hope you ponies feel welcomed aboard! Because you are! Well, that was an assertive welcome. I know that voice, even if I haven't heard it since putting your hoof down. This cruise is going to be... interesting, that's for sure. You've got to wonder what that Minotaur is playing at, and how he intends to profit off the situation. Still, Twilight's family gets settled into the cabin smoothly enough, and as for why they're all getting together for this particular cruise? Yes, this is what it's like to be big-time prize winners. <laughs> I just wish I could remember what contest we won. Wait, you don't know where this prize came from? When some pony offers you a free vacation, you just sign the paperwork and don't ask questions! And now I strongly suspect, and by strongly suspect I mean am absolutely certain, that this prize making its way to Twilight's parents was no accident. Early on in the flight, it becomes abundantly clear that Twilight Sparkle and Princess Cadence are objects of great interest in the eyes of their fellow airship passengers and that particularly assertive voice over the loudspeaker keeps making announcements involving the two elder royals, some of which are wildly incorrect. Regardless, the other passengers are hanging on every shouted word. Twilight's is becoming suspicious. The various princess-themed t-shirts and decor are likewise clues that something may well be up beyond the Zeppelin itself. Okay, that's it. Does any pony know where the cruise announcer is? Excuse me, sir. You can call Iron Will, Iron Will! Well, here's an antagonist I hadn't expected to see again. Not that I'm complaining, mind you. One of the things I appreciated about his first appearance is that while he was pushy and intimidating, bullying the pony folk along to get what he wanted from them, he wasn't mm, malicious. And, while clearly in it for the money, his overly loud, strongly enthusiastic approach to life had a certain rough charm. A sort of bull-in-a-china shop charm, where those left trampled in his wake could at least take solace in the fact that any bruised feelings weren't intentional. And unlike, say, Flynn and Flam, Iron Will is a man, well, a minotaur, with a degree of honor and professionalism. He doesn't really lie, and he does provide real services rather than snake oil. He oversells, but is also true to his word. After all, last time around, when a certain retiring Pegasus wasn't 100% satisfied with his services, he ultimately accepted that he wasn't going to get paid. So... What are you doing here? And why do you keep announcing random things about me and my family? The assertiveness seminar market dried up, so Iron Will started a new career, organizing themed vacation packages. And the theme of this vacation is... Every pony, stomp your hooves if you are here for the premier cruise of the princess's experience! Hello, Conflict. This isn't what Twilight signed on for. Although, technically, Twilight Sparkle hadn't exactly signed on for anything. That was all Twilight Velvet at Nightlight. So, what's next? A confrontation with the Minotaur? Iron Will, I'm not sure it was entirely honest of you to offer this cruise to my family without telling us that ponies bought tickets just to see Cadence and me! 
Iron Will outlined all the details of the cruise in the prize acceptance and consent form that you signed. Point Iron Will, his practices were on the deceptive end of the spectrum, flirting with entrapment, but strictly speaking, above board. Again, this is very different from how Flim and Flam operate, and there is an out. Iron Will prides himself on providing a quality vacation experience, but if Twilight Sparkle and her family don't want it, Iron Will can cancel the cruise and break the hearts of every princess adoring pony on board. Emotional strong arming, legalistic maneuvering, Iron Will is a canny adversary. I'm particularly amused that in spite of his imposing physique, he does not compete against the ponies in a physical manner. No, he's a social manipulator, engaging in battles of wits and willpower. What's more, he's not bluffing. As Cadence admits that she's not up to entertaining fan ponies while also looking after her toddler daughter, and Nightlight expresses his resigned willingness to cancel the cruise, Iron Will shows every sign of going along with their wishes. But Twilight Sparkle isn't having any of this. Disappointing her family? Her fans? This isn't something the Princess of Friendship is up for. So, instead, a bargain. Wait, Iron Will. What if I offered you a deal? If I agree to do whatever princess activities you want, will you promise that my family gets to do the activities they want? Sis, you don't have to do that. We want you to enjoy yourself, too. I don't want the vacation to end now, or let down all of these ponies who are looking forward to seeing us. So what do you say, Iron Will? Do we have a deal? Princess Twilight has a deal! And now we see the shape of the real conflict here. It's an internal conflict in Twilight herself. She wants every pony to have a good time. She feels obligated to those who have come here just to see her, as this is part of what she sees as the duties of a good princess. And yet, Twilight was along on this trip expressly to get away from princess duties and have some relaxing family time. I really like how her family is supportive, bringing up that Twilight doesn't have to undertake all this princess stuff if she doesn't want to, and how they want her to have a good time too. But for now, it's time for Twilight to start weathering Iron Will's myriad impositions on her time and energy, starting with the grand prize raffle! And now, without further ado, the winner is... Star Tracker! Congratulations, Star Tracker! Enjoy your prize! Okay, Dad, bingo time. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I don't have the prize. Congratulations to Star Tracker, who wins the grand prize! Spending the day with Twilight! Have an honorary member of her family! No, Twilight. You didn't have the prize. You were the prize. Well, this is off to a rousingly bad start. With Twilight making the best of it and Star Tracker, well, they head off to join a bingo contest and... I-19! Hey, hey, now we're talking! This princess bingo is great! Did you get that one, Dad? Can any pony tell me how my dad is doing? Yeah, he said the princess bingo is uh, great. <laughs> Twilight is my favorite time of day. <laughs> it's also your name. <laughs> Just thought that was cool. Wow, they did a uh, good job with this new pony. He's an uber fan and wildly nervous, excited, nervous sided about actually meeting the object of his obsessive fanboying. He is just as awkward as anyone might expect. And sweet Celestia, does he hit the creepy stalker vibe just perfectly. On the one hoof, I spent half the time he was on screen thinking he was kind of adorkable and feeling a bit sorry for the particular sort of stress he was under. But on the other hoof, I sat there wanting to grab him, drag him a good two feet further away from Twilight, and tell him, no, dude, uncool. Just as an observer, I found certain aspects of his behavior deeply uncomfortable. This show has addressed concepts of fandom before, and they were clearly going for a particular sort of fan with Star Tracker. I think they nailed it. 
Only time will tell if he's just socially inept and mostly harmless, or if we've got a Stephen King misery-esque situation on our hooves. Anyway, this sets the tone for the rest of the trip. Twilight Sparkle works a cruise event in her role as princess. Her family enjoys the particular activities they were looking forward to. Twilight's attempts to join in are always blocked by her new duties. Duties which she sort of chose to take on herself, but which also Iron Will and the situation he had engineered pressured her into. And let's not forget that Flurry Heart is getting an early start on abducting children. Cadence, I'm so glad you got in the Pee Wee Princess playtime. Flurry is having a wonderful time. That's great. I'm just on my way to take some old-time Appaloosan photos. Theme photo shoots are the best. <laughs> and then do a quick question and answer session on becoming an alicorn before Mom's barrel ride at Niagara Falls. I really hope I don't miss that. Twilight, are you sure you don't mind doing all of these princess activities? Mind? What? Absolutely not. I mean, you guys are having fun, right? <sighs> Besides, I have to make sure these cruise ponies are happy if I want to be a good princess. You're already a good princess, Twilight. Honestly, as long as I get to see the Northern Stars tonight with every pony, I'll be happy. One of these days, Flurry Heart is going to be the sort of magical royal creature that figures prominently in the stories of fair folk and changelings. And Twilight's internal conflict is nicely spelled out, along with her family's desire to help her come to terms with it, to make sure that Twilight herself is doing okay. As an aside, it's nice to see that Twilight Velvet is a risk-taker and adventuress, especially since it highlights the like-mother-like-daughter familial similarity. Likewise, Nightlight's love of bingo because of the organization of letters and numbers? Ah, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, as the old saying goes. Well, things continue in the established vein until, no surprise, Twilight misses the one thing she was really looking forward to, the Northern Stars. I miss them? I miss the Northern Stars? <laughs> you were right, Twilight. They were breathtaking. Oh, we wish you'd been here to see it, Sweet Pea, but we're sure you're making a whole bunch of cruise ponies happy. I'm so happy I could cry. Oh, yeah. The cruise ponies are happy. My family is happy. Even Iron Will is happy. You know who isn't happy? Me! Ah! Oh, my hoof! I'm sorry, but maybe that wouldn't have happened if you weren't practically standing on my tail. Not even my real family stands so close. Ugh. Yep, Twilight snapped. Understandably so. And thus, we come to the lesson. You will always have obligations as a princess, but you also have an obligation to yourself. <sighs> You're right. I think I need to set some boundaries. But first, I owe some pony an apology. For Twilight, it's lesson learned. And it looks like Star Tracker has learned his lesson as well. He's a whole lot less stalkerific after getting stomped. Thank goodness. I really wanted to like the guy, but he was just so creepy at times. Nice to see that this is how it ended up. As for the whole situation with Iron Will and his deceptive imposition of a cruise experience on the royal family. I'd really like to spend the rest of the cruise relaxing with my family. Of course, Princess Twilight. But why was this trip advertised as a cruise of the princesses if you just wanted to get away? Iron Will's Cruise of the Princesses makes no guarantees as to the participation of actual princesses. What? But Iron Will learned his lesson before. Satisfaction not guaranteed. No refund! <gasps> He may be pushy and manipulative, but no pony can say that Minotaur isn't prepared. Prepared right down to having a golden parachute. He is such a legalistic bastard. Not sure if I should admire him for that or not. Probably not. Also, Ironwell makes a great instigator for conflict. A good addition to this episode, and I hope we see more of him at some point in the future. But now, with family around her, Twilight can enjoy the last bit of cruise, 
and with their help, she's clearly adjusting to the whole setting boundaries thing. That's good progress. If you wish to see my full reaction to My Little Pony, French Biz Magic, Season 7, Episode 22, titled Once Upon a Zeppelin, the link, as I mentioned earlier, is in the description. Feel free to leave any comments or likes for that reaction here on this Afterthought review. And until next time, as always, kindly remember, y'all are awesome, stay awesome.